Uh, now we have a tornado warning for this thunderstorm. So that is a new development from the same cluster of storms that has been crossing through the Interstate 10 corridor in the Panhandle. Now we have a returning tornado warning for this portion of the thunderstorm. They were just examining for hail. Now we're seeing at least the circulation that promotes or at least prompts the possibility of a tornado. And a new tornado warning has been issued. This is for Western Gadsden County. It's in effect until 845. A lot going on on this Friday evening, I give you that, with these thunderstorms that have been moving in along these series of complexes that's been causing a whole lot of issues over the last seven to ten days in many parts of the south, including our own region. But nonetheless, if you are within western Gadsden County with this thunderstorm, if you're nearby this, it's hard to miss the lightning, the loud claps of thunder, the gusty winds. But now there's at least a possibility for a little more of a tightening of the circulation within this portion of the thunderstorm amid frequent lightning. This is near the Hardin Heights and just south of there and just to the north of the Sycamore neighborhood. Let's check in on some of the velocity values here. This is where we're seeing at least the red on green kind of tight together right on top of each other. And that tends to show us where we do have at least a higher possibility for the spin that would promote a tornado touching down. This is winds relative to where the storm is. It looks like a little bit of a shifting off towards the east of that uh, near Hardin Heights. And the shear rate does tend to show at least an ongoing trend of gusty winds within here. This little cylinder looking thing, the circular uh, identifier shows where the radar is highlighting at least a little more of a concentrated zone of mid and low level twist. And this is showing up near the Sycamore area. So that is a, another tool that Titan radar has to kind of look deeper into these storms and identify specific points where there can be some stronger rotation that would support a tornado to form. This is a tornado warning based on radar data, nothing that's been confirmed quite yet. We'll see if there's any kind of uh, debris signature to show. I, I don't really foresee this as being debris. It's likely just the inflow and the noise that the radar is producing with that. But nonetheless, we'll check the trends accordingly with that. That does tend to show very strong inflowing winds if that is to be verified. And, and uh, quality control, if you will. So that can be a zone of particularly gustier winds that kind of corresponds with the rotation of the symbol there close to the Sycamore neighborhood. So that's going to be a point where you may want to also make sure you are sheltered appropriately if you're near Highway 12 or south of Interstate 10 in some of these neighborhoods, uh, even a little ways north of Interstate 10. But this is a general uh, kind of broad zone where gusty winds are likely occurring either way you look at it. And that's going to be a point where uh, some gusty winds are likely. We could have some hail on that northern flank there. But if you're in the Sycamore area, that's a point where you definitely have to make sure you're taking shelter. Sycamore Road, Pine Grove Church Road, uh, perhaps even as far south as Boykin Road and over into the Juniper Road area. This will start to move to the east. Uh, at roughly, I think, 25 miles per hour. Greensboro, you're kind of in the direct path of this along the I-10 corridor. That would be uh, exit 174, if I'm not mistaken. This is Highway 12. Uh, and then over towards 166, the Chattahoochee exit. So it's just kind of east of there, but likely to continue to move in the general direction of the easterly fashion along the Interstate 10 corridor. So if you're in surrounding neighborhoods or maybe some of the hotels on those exits at the Quincy exit, definitely a good idea to make sure you are taking appropriate action. Make sure you're getting into the lower room, uh, the lower floor and the interior room of your home or building to make sure that um, you can protect yourself as best you can in advance of any of these gustier winds. I'm taking some of those uh, shear detection symbols off uh, just to declutter things a little bit and make it easier for you to perhaps see where some of this activity is in relation to where you may be here in Gadsden County. Here's the latest shear detector. Uh, and the analysis that's showing at least a little zone of strong shear that did correspond with that symbol where we can see the highest potential for circulation that would prompt a, that would bring a tornado to the ground potentially. So Sycamore and over towards Greensboro, I think those are going to be the next areas, Hardaway and Greensboro, where this portion of the thunderstorm is likely to go. The warning does include you in Gretna, but we do have at least some indications uh, that this is still a few miles away from you to get some of those symbols out to declutter things. So in Gre Greensboro, make sure you're having in, uh, you're in appropriate shelter. Juniper as well. Interstate 10 along Highway 12. Any communities and neighborhoods within that region? 
Good idea to make sure you're inside and you stay there. Turn up your TV before you head to your bathroom or wherever your safe zone is so you can continue to hear us tracking things. You may not be able to see what we're tracking, but at least you can have an idea of what we're describing in relation to where you are here in Gadsden County. So that's going to be a hazardous situation for another several minutes with a tornado warning uh, in western Gadsden County until 845. There's the latest update on the spin. I think we did have a shear rate indication uh, pickup right there. So again, that's closing in, that's close to Sycamore, and some of the roadways along there uh, include that uh, exit 174. So we were just talking about that. That's where we're seeing at least some heightened spin uh, based on the analysis here on Titan radar. Uh, so that's going to be a point, and we'll have to monitor how close this can get to areas like Cochrane Road, the Hardaway Highway area, as well as Toller -Right White Road and outside of Greensboro. So those are still going to be some uh, near-term uh, danger spots, if you will, for the advance of this thunderstorm. Even if it's not something that's touching the ground right now, there's still a good chance that gusts the outflowing winds could certainly interfere with power and uh, creates uh, hazardous conditions to be outside uh, regardless of if this is causing a tornado or not. The debris tracker doesn't show much of anything as far as actual uh, debris that's being picked up, so I'm not seeing anything evident there. We haven't seen an upgrade on the status of this warning to confirm, so there's nothing so far that brings in a confirmation of this, but still, uh, you're Quincy, you're not in this warning, but you are in the path of this general thunderstorm, and it's a good idea over the next uh, 30 minutes or so that you continue to keep eye uh, on the progress of this. Now, we still have that thunderstorm that's affecting South Georgia with this tornado warning. So we're going to shift back and forth between these two spots to give folks adequate information as far as what's happening in both of these zones. This one was at a confirmed level when it comes to what was spotted by law enforcement uh, about 10, 15 minutes ago. The suspected circulation continues to move in the general direction of the Little River. This is close to where Reed Bingham State Park is, maybe a little bit south of there, but along Highway 76 in the Greggs community, that's where we're seeing at least a higher potential for some of the shear, which based on some of the analysis tools is kind of slacked off a little bit. But still, the history of this thunderstorm having at least a strong enough low-level circulation to keep spin going, potentially, uh, still keeps this warning valid uh, through at least 845. We'll see if there's any adjustment in terms of whether it's uh, going to be dropped back to a general uh, radar-indicated tornado warning. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, if you're near Greggs, if you're close to Cecil along Interstate 75 and Highway 41 in southern Cook County, and maybe just for precaution's sake, if you're near or on the north side of Hay Hira, there's a good idea to make sure that you are staying alert for this thunderstorm. Make sure you're not kind of venturing outside trying to see what's going on. I know it can be tempting with folks with their cell phones and cameras on just about every device. You want to capture the moment, but it's not really safe to try to venture out and see uh, what you can find out there uh, because that can create a little more hazard for you, an unnecessary hazard. So make sure you're just making sure, make sure you're staying protected uh, if you're within any of these tornado warnings areas. Cecil to Hayhira, uh, you're going to be next in line for this segment of the thunderstorm that can give you some hassles in terms of gusty wind and the possibility of a tornado on the ground. Again, the shear rates, the detection modes are still kind of faint and weak and not really verifying anything that's actually on the ground, but I don't want to discount the fact that the tornado warning has not been discontinued, it hasn't been expired, and there's still some hefty storms within this region. I'm going to examine this portion here. Yeah, a little closer southwest of Adel. Not really seeing any kind of uh, bona fide uh, circulation detection there uh, based on the Valdosta radar. So we're still seeing at least the indications of possible shear uh, from an earlier confirmed tornado touchdown when it was over southeastern uh, Colquitt County. Uh, and the warning is still being uh, put into effect and staying in effect until 8.30. So about another seven to eight minutes here in the South Georgia tier, and we'll see if that needs, needs any further adjustment. But that's going to be the little notch there, closing in on Highway 76 north of Barney and close to Greggs, uh, where that tornado, possible tornado, if there is something there, would be within that zone moving east and crossing the river. Um, let's go back here to the south. Uh, no warnings here along the Alcilla River near Lamont. Those are not warned for anything. 
pardon me, some rain that's going to be moving towards the Withlacoochee River. Pineda, you've got some rain. Clyetteville, you'll get some rain as well, but nothing warned there. In Gadsden County is where we have our Tornado warning here in our North Florida zones in the eastern, uh, the western side of the Big Bend and to the uh, western side of Gadsden County as well as the thunderstorm shear rate continues to show at least some potential for stronger winds that can be twisting around and causing a tornado to maybe uh, or at least the low clouds. That can certainly translate into gustier outflowing winds that affect neighborhoods nearby any kind of low level spin uh, that may be broad. Uh, and it may not be the tight uh, tornado that's touching down, but you certainly have the wind forces that have been at work uh, within this thunderstorm cell for quite a while now. We were tracking this back at 5 o'clock when it was over uh, southern Alabama. So there's definitely a good reason to continue to uh, keep a watch on this, especially as it gets closer to some of the Tallahassee metro area, closer to Quincy within, I'd say, 830 to 845, and perhaps even moving into Leon County. And I know that's not something you want to hear, especially after what happened a week ago. But nonetheless, you've got advance notice that we can see an extension of a severe thunderstorm warning for Leon County in the, I'd say, 830, 9 o'clock hour. I don't determine when warnings are issued. That's the National Weather Service and the fine folks there. But I would anticipate an extension of a severe thunderstorm warning along the Leon County region uh, because of the overall trends that this thunderstorm has been showing. And based on its projection, I'll show you a track in just a bit once I get the information as far as how fast it's going. A uh, little update on that uh, tornado warning in South Georgia. That will be allowed to expire. So that's a good piece of information to pass along there. There's been an overall weaker trend there, and they just put out a notice that that will be allowed to expire. All right, let's well, talking about the extension of a severe thunderstorm warning. This is until 945. It includes southwestern Leon County and the Lake Talquin area. And that's in advance of that thunderstorm that's still kicking off gusty winds in the western side of Gadsden County. So there's still some shear. It's still looking at a strong rate of shear here to the east of Sycamore now and approaching the Hardaway Greensboro neighborhoods. So this is where that red spot just off of Cochrane Road, this is where if we have any kind of spin that would put a tornado on the ground, it would be within this zone. And that's where we're seeing at least the ongoing trends and the ongoing need of that severe th of that tornado warning within this region. Overall velocity modes, the raw data, uh, again, there is this broad section where some spin, some gusty winds are coming out of the uh, southern edge of this, while stronger winds are kind of going around in this general direction. So we'll put a little sample of wind gust data on this. Uh, pretty modest in this overall detection of wind speeds here. If you do the math, that's about 50 to 60 miles per hour of, of shear there. So that's certainly enough to keep, to keep uh, gusty winds at least in play with this and the possibility given the overall setup and the history of the storm, it is a possibility that we can still have a, a, a tornado that can be put out from this thunderstorm just based on the overall trends it has exhibited over the last few hours, and especially over the last 10 to 15 minutes since it has been moving uh, into this portion of our region. All right, 945 is that severe thunderstorm warning for Leon County, the thunderstorm moving southeast at about 20 miles per hour. Uh, we mentioned the hail risk with this earlier, so that has been also mentioned in the severe thunderstorm warning bulletin text. So we certainly have some hazards that will be moving into Quincy and Midway within the next 15 to 30 minutes. And since it is moving to the east or slightly south of due east, about 25 miles per hour, let's put a storm track on this. Now I'm gonna make it just south of due east because it seems like that's been the trend that's been, it's been following over the last hour or so. So here are some estimated times of arrival. Uh, the Shady Rest area in Gadsden County around 9 o'clock. Quincy, it has it reaching you about 8.50. I may even subtract about 10 minutes from that. It's not zipping along like those uh, storms from last Friday in the morning. Uh, those were some very fast movers. These are not moving nearly as fast. They're kind of sagging in, in comparison to those. So you do have adequate response time. 
and advance lead time to make sure that you do what you need to do, even if you have to just prepare things around your property, e even in Leon County, you know, based on the configuration of our severe thunderstorm warning, uh, the estimation is for uh, the bulk of this to probably get into Leon County after 930 or so. So 930, 10 o'clock right now, it's uh, 828 based on the timestamp. You have time to uh, prepare if you need to. Uh, especially in some of those hard hit neighborhoods that we have because this thunderstorm, uh, again, it's not just going to collapse and fall apart and disappear. Uh, this has held itself together since early uh, in the uh, in earlier in the evening, even in the late afternoon hours across the Florida, Alabama region. So this has still quite a bit of kick to it. And it can still kind of, you know, ruffle things around, needless to say, if it continues on its trend of causing strong, gusty winds. And keep in mind, we haven't had much in the way of showers and storms within Leon County to kind of zap some of the energy out of the atmosphere. So there's good reason to keep a watch on this because we can certainly have gusty winds. We can have the frequent lightning. Lightning has been really picking up here in this portion of the thunderstorm where we have that inflow notch and that little gap there uh, where any kind of suspected spin is occurring for a possible tornado. And it looks like that's right over the Hardaway community right about now. So that's a point where we do have maybe the highest level of concern for any kind of circulation that could support a tornado. It's still kind of going back and forth in terms of its organization, uh, and, and it has not been upgraded to a confirmed tornado at this point. We haven't had enough evidence based on radar or any kind of sightings that have been reported to the National Weather Service. Those have not occurred yet, but there's still at least the general support for the winds to be strong enough and moving in a pattern that can bring out a tornado, even if it's just a very brief touchdown or a week in comparison to what happened a week ago. Uh, even weak tornadoes cause big issues for folks in neighborhoods that get affected by those. So those that are in the more likely area of concern for this include Hardaway, they include Mount Pleasant, Gretna, you're within the edge of the tornado warning and you are kind of in the path of this movement. Douglas City as well on Highway 90. And then Quincy, this will be coming for you. Quincy, you're not in the uh, tornado warning. You're in the severe thunderstorm warning. If a tornado warning is extended, it would likely include you if it is extended. But you still have a severe thunderstorm warning for notification of hail and strong gusty winds within the city of Quincy within the next 10 to 15 minutes. So make sure you're ready. Make sure that you have your devices charged. Make sure you're in a place where you will be properly sheltered from any of the severe weather elements that this thunderstorm can give because it will continue to move to the east at a gradual pace of about 25 miles per hour. If we get a little bit more of a straightening out of this line, that may be positive in terms of less support for spin, but if we continue to have a healthy inflow of wind coming into this that causes this little gap right in here, that's what is indicating where we have the, enough of that twisting uh, potential to give us a tornado. We still haven't had one confirmed, but there's still enough strength with this in terms of its wind motion to cause something to occur whether it's a tornado or whether it's just strong, gusty winds. Sometimes the two can be confused. And going into nighttime, you may still have a little twilight out there, but going into a time of evening where it may be tougher to see things outside, and of course with all the heavy rain that's going to be contained within this, uh, visibility is going to be heavily hindered, and you don't want to necessarily try to go see something uh, just to prove to yourself that something's going on. It's definitely wise to just stay inside and let this go by. But the main point I was trying to give is if that notch, that little gap kind of straightens out, levels out, that would tell me that there's a little more of a strong outflow trend, and maybe this could transpire into more of a gusty wind, almost a gust front, as some folks would say. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. We'll have to see how things evolve over time, and that will give us a clue as far as what uh, direction, what path that this thunderstorm, this persistent thunderstorm will have, and what effects it can have uh, downstream along the Interstate 10 corridor. I did hear the printer go off, so I'm just going to step off momentarily. Flash flood warning is in effect, and it looks like for uh, Jackson County. So that's the uh, edge of the rain. 
that is still across portions of the uh, eastern panhandle uh, where we still have ongoing downpours. So there's going to be a flash flood warning issued for uh, some of these counties over here based on uh, what was just received by the National Weather Service. That South Georgia batch, uh, no tornado warning left with that. So that will continue to move east. Uh, I wouldn't say you're in the clear as far as storm hazards go, but when it comes to the imminent risk of a tornado, we're not seeing that anymore. Lakeland, you've got a pretty good thunderstorm that's uh, moving just off to your north. The core of that is, but you've got heavy rain coming to you. Uh, you'll have more heavy rain. Hey, Hyra, Cecil, uh, over to Ray City. Uh, so be aware of at least some gustier winds that can come from that here in South Georgia, just to give you a better perspective on the radar from Moody Air Force Base. So you will have some rough weather uh, across our interior South Georgia regions along Highway 37 uh, and along 221 and 129 there closer to, to the Alapala River. But just to give folks there an update on storm status, we have not seen a return of a tornado warning there. So that's uh, good news to pass along to you in our South Georgia neighborhoods. But here in the Gaston County neighborhoods, there's still at least evidence of the strong enough winds gradually moving towards the Gretna area where there is still the support that's being given for a possible tornado. Uh, if there is a positive from this, it's that it's not at a status where something has been confirmed. There hasn't been debris noted on radar. We'll check that out real quick. And again, uh, this is not showing any evidence of debris, just a very strong uh, set of inflowing winds. So we don't have any kind of debris, but we certainly have the possibility of hail. If you don't have the heavy, uh, it, I'm sh pretty sure some neighborhoods have gusty winds, but there's an increasing threat for hail and a higher likelihood for even larger hail that's moving into the Highway 90 corridor between Mount Pleasant and Gretna. So even if the winds don't kind of uh, ruffle things up, you have a good chance to have some hail that's falling. So be aware of large hail that can result from this thunderstorm, especially on that northern edge just outside of where that circulation may be. So that can bring hail about for Gretna. We can see this kind of moving towards Quincy, especially on the north end of town, uh, where you can have some impacts from large hail along Bainbridge Highway, Solomon Daly Road, Luton Road, Adipolgus Highway over towards Woodward Road. If there is a hail hazard that continues with this, it will likely move in that general direction. Uh, that is also a hazard that comes with a severe thunderstorm warning, so be aware of that possibility from Quincy northward, I would say, with a, a pretty good swath of hail that is possible within this region. I'm a little curious as to why the hail path extended to Gretna when the actual thunderstorm really hasn't gotten there yet. But anyways, that's beside the point. Uh, the main point still remains that we do have the possibility of hail on the northern flank of this. And when we look at our storm threat scale, it does tend to extend any kind of hail possibility possibilities uh, farther into that Gretna area. So we'll also see if uh, there may be some radar laps with this, but nonetheless, uh, that is going to be one of the hazards on Highway 90 west and north of Quincy when it comes to hail possibilities. There's the latest uh, update on the hail threats or the just the hazard threats in general, not seeing a huge amount of circulation. If we had a rotation threat, we'd see some uh, pixels of red in there, and that would indicate a stronger likelihood of strong enough rotation for uh, an actual tornado to be touching the ground, but we're not at that phase yet. We still have at least the ongoing threat for a tornado within this portion of uh, central Gadsden County for about another seven minutes. The warning is set to expire at 845. We are checking things out right now and uh, getting the information from the National Weather Service, and we'll see if there's any kind of issuance of guidance on wh what the future of this warning holds. But there is still at least threatening weather, even if it's not a tornado, there's still some threatening weather that will affect uh, Quincy over the next 20 minutes. It will come towards Midway and likely into Leon County. Uh, the severe thunderstorm warning that extends to Lake Talquin and the Bloxham Fort Braden area. That's in effect until 945. So there is the expectation that between now and then, a portion of this thunderstorm and the outflowing gusty winds will affect those severe thunderstorm warned areas around Lake Talquin. And depending on the overall pattern of this thunderstorm, I would anticipate some effects into the Tallahassee metro and city limits uh, before the 10 o'clock hour. That's certainly a possibility, uh, likely starting around the Lake Jackson area uh, just before 10 o'clock. So be aware of that possibility if you uh, need to uh, connect your phone, if you need to charge something up, if you need to finish cooking, 
uh, probably you have time to do that, but also be aware of the progress of that thunderstorm, uh, which is still currently tornado warned uh, here in the west central side of Gadsden County. So there has been no update on the status of the warning. If it is allowed to expire, we'll We'll stick with it until it's expired. The current expiration time is 845. And then, of course, if no other warnings are issued after this exp expires, we'll take you back to normal programming. And again, I appreciate your understanding for the need to get information on severe weather and uh, tornado risk to the neighbors who need it here in Gadsden County. That's where we're focusing on right now, uh, right along the Highway 12 corridor, where it goes uh, from Douglas City, the west side of Quincy, uh, south towards Sawdust. Uh, those will be areas where gusty winds are most likely. And if there's enough spin, we haven't checked the shear rate in a while. There's a little zone of higher shear, kind of on the lower end of strong shear based on our scale there. Uh, but it's right on that intersection of Hosford Highway, Greensboro Highway, and uh, over to the west of there. And it's moving east. So that's going to be a zone where your wind gust potential will be highest. Uh, any kind of spin uh, would be contained within that general area. So neighbors and neighborhoods in Gretna and Douglas City, uh, you are going to be more susceptible to just general gusty winds. Some of that can really intensify a little bit. Uh, nothing that has shown an actual tornado that's been touched down, but there's definitely going to be some gustier winds contained with that. New flash flood warnings being issued for our South Georgia regions. Uh, they include Berrien and uh, Brooks County. I don't think I have the flash flood warnings uh, in the overall query here, but nonetheless, uh, if you are visually able, you'll see the scrolling message at the top of your screen. If you're watching us over the air on channel 27.1, uh, we do have at least a higher likelihood for some flash flooding to occur across this region here of Southern Georgia. So be aware of high rain accumulations within this area and the risk for uh, a quick uptick in standing water or even rushing water in some cases here in our South Georgia tier. Berrien, Brooks, Lanier, portions of Lowndes County, uh, all included in that uh, flash flood warning, uh, which is in effect as soon as I bring that data up, in effect until, and uh, pardon my slowness in getting the issuance and the expiration time of that flash flood warning, 1230. So this will be an uh, ongoing issue for South Georgia, uh, especially where we have the ongoing swath of heavy rain. Uh, watch for flooding. Flash flood warning is in effect. Uh, high rain accumulations likely. A couple of inches have fallen. A couple more can fall, and that can worsen local flooding issues across our South Georgia communities, especially north of Highway 84, but particularly in those areas where that rain has been pretty steady and heavy for the last hour plus. Uh, the severe thunderstorm warning is set to continue until 945. The tornado warning still officially in effect until 845. So we have about, about another five minutes to go with this uh, where we continue to monitor where we see the highest rates of low level spin or at least some rotation within the cloud. And that can certainly give us an indication of just strong gusty winds in general, whether or not it's something uh, as far as a tornado on the ground. We're not seeing evidence of that. This has not been upgraded to confirmed, but there's definitely the hazard of gusty winds, loss of power, and uh, various inconveniences related to gusty winds here within and just west of Quincy on the Highway 1290 split there and then south on Hosford Highway. That's the likely zone where gusty winds will be coming in and that's going to affect Quincy over the next few minutes. So uh, as mentioned, you have had adequate time to make sure you're ready for any kind of wind risks that this will carry into Quincy and you're about close to that high tie where time where the overall gusty winds will start to have an effect in our western Quincy neighborhoods uh, with a strong gusts of wind. Watch for some hail. There's still that possibility based on storm threats here. A little bit of a hail core, if you will, uh, north and east of Gretna. Smaller hail surrounding that, so you can have some maybe penny size or dime size hail, maybe upwards of nickel size to quarter size uh, within those stronger areas. The hail path continues to show at least some evidence of prob higher probabilities of hail within that northern stretch of this thunderstorm complex near and north uh, and east of Highway 90, and this will likely carry into portions of uh, the highways moving north of Quincy, uh, Atapolgas Highway as well as Bainbridge Highway. Those will be some areas and neighborhoods 
neighborhoods around there that can pick up on some hail as well as uh, some gusty winds and heavier rain. But it looks like over the next three minutes, as this uh, circulation moves out of the tornado warned area, and we have not had a reissuance of a tornado warning for this region quite yet, uh, there's still at least a couple minutes to assess the need for such an issuance. But even without that, there is a severe thunderstorm warning that continues for the bulk of Gadsden County this may be extending into Leon County uh, later on in, within an hour or so, uh, but that is something to consider if you are uh, still considering what you're going to do on a Friday night here in the capital city. There is a likelihood that we can certainly have some strong gusty winds and rough thunderstorms coming our way. Checking other data coming through, the uh, National Weather Service issuing a severe thunderstorm warning in some of the Panhandle counties, so essentially just extending the overall coverage of those warnings with a renewal of strong gusty winds uh, for Jackson County, Calhoun County, and this will also follow that same trail, maybe not to the same potential as far as tornadoes go because a lot of this has already been zapped in terms of energy from uh, earlier rain, um, but we can see at least a little more development uh, uh, south of Interstate 10, moving into the forested areas of Liberty County. And that can maybe have an effect in Wakulla County later on tonight, maybe around 10 to 11, where some areas of rain and thunderstorms can head in your general direction. But as a reminder, the tornado watch that was in effect for just South Georgia uh, now includes all of our North Florida counties. It does include Leon County, Gadsden, Wakulla, and surrounding counties, also into the, western, the eastern Big Bend. Uh, where the tornado watch will stay in effect until 1 a.m. So that is an important update to keep in mind. The tornado watch now includes all of our counties with one exception, that being Franklin County, as, as well as Miller, Baker, Mitchell. You're kind of in the clear, if you will, for any kind of tornado threat. But our South Georgia tier of counties, your watch ends at 11. For North Florida, your watch ends at 1. And then for the Suwannee River area, your watch ends at one, simply meaning we have the conditions still in place to where individual pockets of stronger storms can cause a spin up tornado. It's not gonna be a widespread outbreak that's not really being forecast at this point, but even one tornado in any neighborhood causes issues for that neighborhood. And it's important for us to make sure you are advised appropriately of threatening weather as it moves through our various portions of southern Georgia and northern Florida. So we have less than a minute to go with this warning, and we'll wrap things up as long as a warning is not reissued. And at this point, it doesn't look like it has been, but Quincy, you're going to get loud. You're going to get flashy because of all the lightning and thunder that's rolling in your direction. Gusty winds are coming out of this, but no tornado warning is being reissued. So Quincy, make sure you are aware of the storm around you. Midway, it's heading in your direction. Havana, Lake Talquin, those will be some areas that get in on some dicey weather, but at least at the, as of this point, we're not seeing imminent tornado risk from any of the thunderstorms that are around our area. We are going to continue to stay on top of things off screen. I will do some streaming for you throughout the course of the night uh, on our website, WTXL.TV. On our news app, just search WTXL News on your favorite app store, download it. Whenever we're streaming, you'll be able to access us. And if we do have more tornado warnings across our region, we'll come back into programming as needed. But for now, we'll take you back to typical network programming on this Friday evening here on ABC 27. Thanks for joining us.